What's going on, everybody? It is January 30th. We've got a nine-game uh, Tuesday slate. A lot of interesting games. Um, there's already a bunch of news out, which is great. Um, last night didn't go so well. I uh, put up 258.7. You know, got three out of Bledsoe. He played like two minutes or three minutes or something, which didn't help. I would have been in and around the cut line otherwise. Um, Kemba underperformed, not very highly owned. I really wish that I didn't go that direction. Uh, I just couldn't make it work last night. I couldn't figure out my my puzzle. Um, I, I thought I'd get a little bit more out of Tyreek, um, but you know I can't really complain with 27. He just didn't really do anything else. Very happy with Middleton. Very happy with Josh Jackson. Um, the Butler thing surprises me, but I guess. Atlanta winning is probably even more surprising, um, but I really liked Butler last night. That one, that one kind of bums me out. Not that 39 is like horrible or anything, but it's pretty significantly undervalued. I should have used that Suns uh, value to go to Giannis. Um, you know, Sarge was functional. He was always going to be highly owned after the Philly news came out. Um, Amir didn't kill me, so I'll take that. And Monroe did exactly what we, what I sort of needed. Um, it was a weird night. Uh, nothing really like 325 to win the uh, the and one. Um, I wish that I would have held on Taj. I just, I don't know, could never make it work. I couldn't fit those pieces together. But you know that happens sometimes. On to the next one where value seems to be a little bit more plentiful. So we'll start here. Um, Wizards and Thunder. Wizards 108 implied total. Uh, they are three-point underdogs at home, um, and their total is 11th. And right now, John Wall is doubtful uh, for tonight. And with it being a seven o'clock start, you know, by all accounts, we should know that one way or the other. So Beal is 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DraftKings. Um, oh, come on now. Two weeks. Try that again. So Beal needs 40. Um, he's been sometimes not so awesome <laughs> uh, with Wall out. Still interested in him, uh, but it's kind of a difficult game. Not like not a great matchup for them. I would have liked this a lot better if uh, Wall were playing, but I think Roberson being out is going to be big. Um, it still makes Beal sort of the focus defensively. So I, I would have preferred to see Wall, but I'm, and you know what, Beal should be a three. The rest of all the, the pricing on the Wizards, I don't love. Um, Otto Porter, 6,800 on FanDuel, so we're looking 35-ish. Uh, that feels like a bit of a a stretch, but Ubre at 4,800, I think, is kind of nice. Um, Thunder are at least going to give up some threes, which, you know, fits Ubre pretty well. He would need 25. Um, he's done that twice in the past six games. I like the idea of Ubre. So he's a three. Markeith Morris. 5,500, he would need 28. Uh, two straight games in the 30s, three of four. Um, you know, he could see a lot of mellow, so I'd be fine with entertaining that. Let's see, what has... That's nah, not going to be a good reference point. Not going to matter. Um... Yeah, I don't really see much else. Like, I don't, I don't think I would go to Sadoransky or, you know, Tim Frazier or anything like that. So I think I'll move on to OKC. OKC one eleven implied total is sixth. So we're looking at Russ at twelve five, which is some kind of difficult. He's going to roast Sadoransky real bad but he needs 60 plus easy for this to be any value 
Uh, four out of his last five have been 60 or higher, including a 73-pointer in his most recent game two nights ago. I can't imagine ending up with Westbrook, even though I really like him. Um, I don't expect to get there. I actually think he's a two here, just uh, matchup-wise, no wall. Um, if enough value comes out at other positions, at positions other than point guard, I guess, um, we'd have a decent chance of being able to fit him in, but 12-5 is quite the impediment. <laughs> Paul George, 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. So 42 for George. Um, he's had one, two, three, four, five games in the 40s in the past two weeks. Um, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable. Like, I think it's going to be a lot easier, obviously. It's going to be a lot easier to get to George. Um, he's a three for me. Steven Adam, let's check out NBA Wowie for Roberson actually. Cause that could be interesting. <laughs> Might even be negative. It's not like he's uh, some dominant ball guy. So, it's a boost to Westbrook, not really anything to anybody else. Okay. Good to know. Adams at 7,100, I can't imagine. Although, let's see. So... If Steven Adams is going to play 30-plus minutes, does that mean that Gortat has to play more? Let's think about this for a second. Um, Washington. So they've been playing Gortat like 20 minutes a game, Mahinmi like 11 or 12. I don't think that they can guard Steven Adams with like... Markeith Morris or Mike Scott. I think Gortat. This is this is similar to a couple nights ago with the Raptors. I think that Gortat is going to have to play more here. How's he done against the Thunder? Well, maybe I'm wrong because uh, they played a couple nights ago, and I'm stupid. See, that's what happens when you're... When was that? Nope, that was uh, Thursday. So I even knew about this. Never thought about it then. Fucking dumb. <laughs> so stupid. So what happened on the 25th? Who got the minutes? Okay. Beal went 46. Markeith Morris played 38 minutes. And it was great for him. So they really did just go small. Okay. Well, never mind everything that I've just been saying. Um... So Adams did what against that? He put up 37 fantasy points. That's, and that's just barely value. Okay, so I'm comfortable not having Steven Adams. He's a four. We got there eventually. And then Mello, 6,100, needs 30. Uh, had 30 in that particular game. Has had 30 in a couple others. You know, I'm fine with it. I will probably have... Oh, not a two. Mello's a three. I'll probably have at least one Thunder guy, if not two, to the Knicks now. Uh, Knicks, 110.25 implied total is eighth. They're hosting the Brooklyn Nets as five-point favorites at home. So first up is Zinger, 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. Needs 44. He's done that once in the past two weeks. Um, you know, does take an uncharacteristically large amount of his shots from the mid range, which is 
exactly what you want to do against the Nets. How's he been against Brooklyn? Went for 40, went for 20 in 17 minutes. So injury, I assume. And went for 50. Always plays well. Um, hard to not say, look at Porzingis for tonight. Um, man, if that FanDuel price was a couple hundred bucks lower, I would be pretty, t like, I would really enjoy uh, rolling with Zinger here. I'm going to say that he is a FanDuel 3 and a DK 2. I really like him, and that price on DraftKings is tasty. I might play DK tonight. We'll see. Courtney Lee, 5,400. That's 27. Um, he's been in and around that area. 26 in his last one, and then a 36, a 31, another 31. Could provide value. Uh, no Rondé Hollis Jefferson. No Karis Levert. Just in case you're thinking about this from a defensive point of view. Uh, Hardaway, 6,400 or 6,500. I don't think I want to go there. You'd need 32 while he can get there. Uh, that seems like a lot to ask right now. He's a, you know, he's a four for me. And then Cantor is the one I'm interested in most. Well, not interested in most, but you know the last guy that I'm interested in. Uh, 6,800, which price has been rising, unfortunately. Uh, 34 is what we need. He's hit that in, well, technically only his most recent game. <laughs> but it's been in the 30s four other times. Um, definitely like him here. He's a three. Uh, Brooklyn pretty bad against centers. Oh, let's head to Brooklyn. Nets. 105.25 implied total is 14th. So, let's see what we've got. Damari Carroll. Oh, we need to look at Wowie. So let's take a look at just the Nets. Oh, bam. All right, so Nets. And let's take off Jefferson, Lynn, just in case, and Levert. Not a ton of minutes to go off of, but we might be able to get a little bit of a trend here. A little bit of a boost to Dinwiddie. That's about all that I would glean from that. So Damari Carroll, 5,500. You need 27. Um... He's hit that one, two, three, four times. Alternating games, too. Good, bad, good, bad. Don't, nope, never mind. It doesn't alternate. <laughs> uh, it's Tuesday, guys. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I'm fine with Damari Carroll. Uh, Alan Crabb, 4,500. That'd be 22. Um, I just don't ever trust the dude. Solid matchup for him. Um... Make him a four. Dinwiddie, though. 5,500 on FanDuel. 6,500 on DK. Um, that FanDuel price, you know, he needs 27. If he's going to get back up into the 33 minutes, uh, I would really like Dinwiddie. So I think that I'm going to say that Spencer Dinwiddie is a FanDuel three. And that's it. I probably wouldn't take him on DK at 6,500. There's a chance that I can get to a position where Dinwiddie is slightly, like, more like a two and a half. Or I could just start using, like, the the one uh, tier. 
I like to save that for uh, incredible situations where guys almost assuredly need to be in a lineup. Joe Harris at 4,000. Um, needs 20. You know, that's fine. Quincy Acey uh, should be getting some extra minutes with Rondé Hollis Jefferson out. He's at 3,600 on FanDuel. Um, you know, he's a he's a punt. No more, no less. And then Jared Allen, also just a punt, 3,700. Um, I, I won't have him, so that's probably all that matters. That's probably it for me. Raptors hosting the Timberwolves. Uh, 112.25 implied total is third. So this is kind of interesting. We need... We've got... DeRozan at 8,500, 7,700 on DK, so 40 and change. Um, he's had one 42-point game in his last two weeks. You have to assume that DeRozan would get Butler, and that's not going to go well for him. I'd like to know how DeRozan has been against the Bulls in the past. I assume they haven't played. Toronto and Minnesota haven't. No, they, they did play last week. He had 38. How was DeRozan against the Bulls in his career? Did go off on them twice. Um, yeah, I don't really love DeMar. Kyle Lowry, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. Um, so you're still looking for Lowry to get somewhere in the 40 range. 236s and a 53. Otherwise, not so much. Um... I like the game more for Lowry than I do for DeRozan, for sure, but it's a tough, it's a tough matchup. Hmm, I don't know. Serge Ibaka, 5,700 and 5,000. Um, I can't imagine it. Needs to, uh, 28 or so. Got there in the last one, but that's it. I'm just going to ignore it. Jonas, um, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DraftKings. So you need 30 out of him. He had back-to-back -back monsters, the 47-pointer and then the 60-pointer, which is insane. Um, let's see. If they don't go to Jonas, you would think they would. How many minutes did he play against them on the 20th? 11. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to say Jonas is a 4. And then DeLon Wright, uh, 4,100. I can't imagine taking him outside of like a GPP punt. So let's go to Minnesota. Wolves, 105.75 implied total is 12th. Oh, I wish there was more to like here. I really do. So Wiggins is 6,200, 6,300 on DK. You know, he's been playing better. There's just not a ton of uh, upside in his price. If you end up there, you're okay with it, but... I mean, I'm assuming that Butler will get OG, which would mean Wiggins would get DeRozan. What did he do in that game? So there was no Butler, and Wiggins had 48. All of the starters did really well. I mean, consistent, not necessarily relative to their price. All right, so Wiggins is a three. Jimmy Butler at 9,000 needs 45. Um, I don't love it here. Didn't play in the last one. I'm going to say he's a four. Towns is 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. You're looking, you know, 48. Uh... He's had... 
a 50, a 49, and a 66 in the past two weeks. So three out of his last eight have gotten there. Um, they don't really have anybody that matches up well with Towns. I don't think Abaka can deal with him athletically. So I do like it. I do like Towns here. But just as a three. And then Teague, 5,700 on both sites. So that's just under 30. He's hit 30 in uh, three of his last five. So again, I'm okay with it, but it's not the best game to have a giant bite out of. Nope, come on. There we go. To the new look, Detroit Pistons, who uh, by all accounts will not have Blake or fuck who the hell else is in the trade Bryce Johnson or Willie Reed available so that should be interesting Cleveland terrible defensive team so this is going to be an interesting focus for a team that's playing a bunch of dudes that aren't very good um, that trade happened during the live stream last night which was bananas also thanks to everybody that showed up we got to 600 so new threshold now to get to 700 I don't even know how to handle this. Like, I want to say that I like Drummond tonight. But how the hell? Oh, my God. This is going to be wild. All right. So Anthony Tolliver projected to get 35 minutes. He's 3,800 on FanDuel and uh, 4,500 on DK. So Anthony Tolliver is a two. This is wild. Um, Andre Drummond. Now we know how bad Cleveland is against centers, so we need to balance that. I don't know if I said this. 108.25 implied total is 10th. They're two point underdogs at home. Um, Drummond is 10 5, so you need 52 out of Drummond. Is he. He's done that three out of his last seven, including the 86 pointer. Um. Is oh man, ten five is so much. Uh, hard to say no. He's a three for me because of that price. You know, you'd like to see him at like ninety eight hundred or something like that. He's much better on DK. So then we've got Reggie Bullock, thirty eight hundred on Fanduel, forty seven hundred on DK. He needs twenty. He's done that in the last two. With these minutes, you have to look at him. So all of the value is going to be. Um, on the Pistons. Yeah, I don't... Can I be more confident in Reggie Bullock? I'd rather have Kennard, I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see. we got all day to look at it. Ish Smith at 6,000. So that's 30. I don't even... Is NBA WoW even worth it here? So, Pistons. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. I have a feeling we're not going to be able to glean too much out of this. It's just too many minutes. But let's take off Avery Bradley and Tobias Harris. Great trade for the Clippers. Oh, and Boban. Not that he's going to be uh, changing the equation here too much. Free Boban in LA land. Just trade DeAndre and go with him. Okay, so a decent boost to Kennard. <laughs> That's relatively it. So, Ish Smith, 6,000. He'll need 30. I mean, you would expect him to be gunning. So, also just a 3. 
and then Luke Kennard. See, the problem is there's nobody that you can like completely rely on. These are all just min salary guys, and picking the right one is going to be the trickiest part of it all. I think it's probably oh, man. Tolliver, like definitely like Tolliver more than most. And I think that I would probably say like, I'm ignoring Drummond for this case because we we know what we're getting with Drummond. I think I I would go Tolliver Bullet Canard now that I'm looking at it. I'm anxious to see what the optimizer spits out. Tolliver is going to be in 90% of the lineups I would expect. Uh, and then Stanley Johnson, also just a you know, three, I guess. I'm not entirely sure how these minutes are going to shake out. <sighs> Pistons picked a hell of a day to make that trade. They got Cleveland coming in. Cleveland's defense is bad. Now, on the opposite end of that, we've got the Cavs. 110.25 implied total is... Eighth. So LeBron is probably in play now. Um, with all of that value in Detroit, LeBron at 11 4 at small forward with no, like, you know, like no, I mean, getting rid of two starters. Oh man, he should be able to do whatever he wants. Let's see NBA Wowie. This might not be super relevant, but it might be an interesting look as to how the Pistons play. So, shot profiles for the season um, defensively. You know, they do limit shots at the rim, and they're relatively, you know, they give up a little bit more in the mid range. What happens if you pull those guys? What does that look like? So that would be Bradley, Harris, Boban. So when they're off, they've played 820 possessions. Uh, people still get to the rim. Everything's all relatively neutral. They just give up a couple more threes above the break. Okay. Defensively not very good though. Well, actually you'll slightly above average. So, good to know. In that I got nothing out of that. Uh LeBron at 11-4. I like um he needs 57 or so for value. Um this feels like a good scenario for him. Kevin Love at 7,000. What's Love's history against Drummond? I mean, I know it's not a one-to-one, -one, but like just sort of against the Pistons. Just mid-30s. Okay. Yeah, that's sort of how I feel about him at that price. Uh, no thank you on JR. Isaiah at 62 would be 31. Uh, he's a four. I can see it for Isaiah. And then Tristan Thompson, 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. Um, how has he been against... Because that's really the question. Has Tristan done well against Andre Drummond in the past? And I would have assumed he did. I can't imagine taking him, but he's a 4 because of his price. And that's a 4 on, uh, on FanDuel. Oh. <sighs> I have a feeling LeBron's going to pop in a lot of optimizers now. We'll go to Houston. Another guy that might pop, Mr. Harden. So Houston, 118.25 implied total is first. They are 13-point favorites at home against the Magic. Um, Harden is 12-1 on FanDuel, 11-2 on DK. So you're looking for 60 out of James. He has not done that since he's been back, but three straight games in the 50s is building pretty well. Um, either going to end up with him or LeBron. I'd be surprised if it was either one of or if it went a different direction. I think I would probably go. Ah, 
Oh man, I don't know. Probably LeBron if I can get another part of the Rockets. No Trevor Ariza for the Rockets. He'll be out a couple games. Um, let's look at Paul. 10-4 on FanDuel. 9-4 on DK. So we're looking 52. He's had uh, two games above that range. Also some pretty big stinkers. But, you know, in a great spot. He's a three. Just straight for me. No Mbamute. Capella, 7,500 FanDuel, 7,000 DK, 38. He's done it twice. Has he played them at all? Nothing crazy. Yeah, he's just a four. Eric Gordon, 5,400 on FanDuel. That's 20. Seven. Um, I'd be more than okay with that. You know, if I went, uh, I'd be more than okay having like Gordon and, um, you know, one of the Pistons guys. If that made me go to LeBron, but not that it's going to slow the Rockets down because they're going to bomb threes one way or the other. But Orlando does limit that. A lot. They do allow a lot of shots at the rim, so transition might be interesting. I'm assuming Orlando is a terrible transition defense team. If they're taking away that many threes and they're bad, I would guess that uh, they give up a bundle in transition. No, I'm uh, I'm wrong. They're actually not bad in transition. Really, really bad in the half court. <sighs> okay, so that's just a breakdown. So that's going to be like Paul breaking them down? I don't, okay. Eric Gordon's a three. I don't want anything else there, so we'll go to Orlando. Uh, Magic, 105.25 implied total is 14th. So, I don't have any interest in Aaron Gordon, who needs 41. He's hit that. He hit it in the last one, but I am i don't love it here. Am I wrong? Nope. Fournier, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. That's a little bit more palatable. 32 for him. Um, he's done it once in the past two weeks. I'd be okay ending up there. Alfred Payton, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. will be 35. This doesn't strike me as the best game, but, you know, he's had two 40-pointers recently. Um, price is not bad. Still just a 4 for me because I really don't like that matchup. Jonathan Simmons, 4,700 FanDuel, 4,900 DK. Uh, looking just under 25. I'm going to just probably full sail pass on that. And Biombo at 5,500. They might play him right off the floor. 28. Um, I'm good. So next we go to the Pels. Uh, unless you've been living under a rock, no uh, no boogie, done for the year. Uh, Pelicans, 111, it, this is the only game that doesn't have a line. I have it at Pelicans, uh, seven point favorites at home against the Kings. Um, 111 implied total would be sixth. So AD is 12-5 on FanDuel and 11-4 uh, on DK. Haven't looked at this at all, so... What's the boogie on off? Thank you, NBA Wowie. Nope, not Pistons. So, Cousins on. Cousins off. Wow. 
that is a ginormous boost to Boogie. Or to AD. And to Drew. So I'm going to give both of those guys a boost. Maybe that, you know, I'm not too worried about Jameer. Darius Miller could probably get a little bit. Let's see where we end up there. So AD needs 60. Uh, no reason to think that he couldn't be there. Um, he's, I would imagine he's going to be very highly owned. I don't necessarily love it because it's the Kings. He should feast. Um, I think I would just prefer to have Drew. 8,500 FanDuel, 8,300 DK. You're looking 42. I uh, had 50 in the last one, the first game without Boogie. He's had 50 with Boogie. Um... Oh. Yeah, I'm going to say that Drew Holiday is a two for me. I would prefer to have him for right now compared to AD. Toll five is just a massive number. Um, and that's probably it. I still want to see how this shakes out. I think it's just going to be a lot of Drew and AD. Let's go to the Kings. Kings 104 implied total is uh, 16th. This is just a weird, weird team. So Bogdan is 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Ah, didn't want to do that. I should save this. I never save it while I'm doing it. It would really piss me off if I had to go back and listen to myself and recreate what I just did. Okay, so I do like Bogdan. 5,100. He needs 25. You know, he can get there. Still just a three. But if you desperately need a king, it's probably not a bad direction to look. Uh, De'Aaron Fox at 5,700. I don't think I have any interest in. Um, that's 28. He can get there, but that's that's not the spot for me tonight. Nor is Buddy healed, although Buddy healed on DK is uh, perfectly acceptable. Scal, 5,400 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. You're looking 27. Uh, didn't play in the last one. Had uh, three straight games at value or higher um, during this two-week stretch. I'd like to get word that he's going to be playing, but I like Scal. Don't need George Hill or Justin Jackson. Uh, Costa Kufos, 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. If he's playing, he needs 20. Um, hit it in the last one. Uh, I'd be more than okay with having him. You just need to know that he's playing. Three games left. I've been rambling too much here uh, Spurs 103.75 implied total is 17th hard to get too wild about this game uh, it's by far the lowest implied total the Nuggets 97.25 uh, is dead last so not a ton of focus here um, Aldridge at 9,000 is probably too high he would need 45 while he has the ability to get in the 50s, it's not like he's that kind of guy. But Denver's defense has just been pretty atrocious from a fantasy perspective lately. So I'm going to say that uh, he's just a four. Kyle Anderson on DraftKings is fine. I, d I wouldn't take him on FanDuel. And... <sighs> Pow needs 33. I think this could be a good spot for him. Jokic, not the best defender. No Mason Plumley. Could be good. And then DeJounte Murray, also a three. I just, I can't imagine taking any parts of that. Nuggets, uh, like I said, 97.25 implied total is 18th. 
there is not going to be a ton to, to like here. I don't like Gary Harris on FanDuel at 7,100, uh, but on DraftKings at 6,100, much different play. I'm going to say he's a DK3. Nikola Jokic, 9,700 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DraftKings. Um, I mean, that's, that's just such a big number for him. He's been consistent in the 40s, uh, four straight games in the 40s. That's not enough to get you where you want to be. Um, Spurs, obviously good defensively, not necessarily against centers. Um, Jokic is just a four for me, and that's probably DK only. Now, Will Barton, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. He needs 30, uh, hit 38 last night. So they are on the back-to-back. -back. Um, I'd be more than okay with Will Barton. He's just a straight three for me. You can make a case that he's a two on DK. I just don't want to go too crazy because of the matchup. Uh, I don't really have any interest in Jamal Murray or Wilson Chandler. And Trey Lyles, unfortunately his FanDuel price is a bit too high. Um, should be seeing a bunch of extra run with Mason Plumley out. Uh, he would need 30, which he hit last night and has hit in his last three um, so he's a DK3 for me, but 5,100 on, or sorry, he's a FanDuel 3 for me. 5,100 on DK, um, you know, I think that's a really great look. I'm going to say that Trey Lyles is actually a DK2. Jazz hosting the Golden State Warriors. 104.75 implied total is 15th. They are 7.5 point underdogs at home. Did I get an email? I think I did. No, I did not. Never mind. So, ah, uh, wow. That's not what I expected. Okay, Donovan Mitchell is 7,300. He needs 36 to hit value. He's done that twice, a couple games in the 30s. Am I just outlandish on him? A little bit. I'm okay with it, though. So Donovan Mitchell looks great. Yeah? Have they played at all? Yeah, played pretty well. Um, I like it. Donovan Mitchell's a two for me. Joe Ingles is a four. I just know I can tell from the price. <laughs> uh, and then Ricky Rubio. You see, I'm really enjoying taking Jazz guys. Rubio's been hella consistent. Needs 25. He's had uh, one, two, three games in the 30s, a 28, a 29. All of those are at value here. Um, he's just a three for me because, you know, he's Ricky Rubio. But I like it. I don't want Gobert on FanDuel. DraftKings, though, that's not horrid. Um, he would need 40 for value on FanDuel. He's hit that twice. Um, he's been in the 30s, so I'm not going to disregard him totally. I'm going to say that he's a FanDuel 4 and a DraftKings 3. And then finally, favors at 5,700. Wow, he's, you know, he's been in the 30s. I usually just disregard him because of Gobert, but I'll say that he's a 3, just from recent performance. <laughs> then finally, the New York, or the New Look Clippers. 111.75 implied total. They are 2.5 point favorites at home against the Blazers. And haven't heard any word. Uh, the expectation is that Tobias Harris and Avery Bradley are going to play as of right now. If they don't, obviously, we can make some adjustments moving forward. Um, Lou Williams, 8,900 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. I'm not super in love with this, but defensively, he should have a decent shot, even though uh, Portland's been good defensively and from a fantasy perspective. He would need 45. Um, I assume that... What is he without Blake? 
He gets a little boost, I remember looking at it. Um, yeah, Lou Williams is fine. His price is just already high, so that's it's hard to take too much advantage. DeAndre, 7,700 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. You know, you're looking 38 or so. Um, also just a three. Tobias Harris, I don't really have any interest in, although on DK you can get there. Taya Dosich, 4,700 and 4,900, so just under 25, which is basically where he is all the time, which makes me okay with it. Oh, come on. S. But yeah, I can't. We need to see Harris and Avery Bradley first. I'll tell you what, if uh, if Beverly was healthy and Gallinari was healthy, well, I guess I mean that's not a bad like rotation. Lou Will, DeAndre Harris, Avery Bradley. If Beverly were healthy, and then Gallo, um, Gallo questionable for tonight. Uh, we've got him in for twenty minutes, so it shouldn't matter. Finally, Portland Blazers. 109.25 implied total is ninth. Uh, it would be a big benefit to Dame and CJ if they find out that, like, A.B. Bradley and Harris aren't playing. Um, so first up is Dame, 9,100 and 8,700. So we're looking for 45. Uh, he's been in and around there, but hasn't had just a monster game lately. Um, I'm okay with Dame. I prefer CJ. CJ 7,500 on FanDuel, 71 on DK, looking 37 or so. Um, I just think there's a little bit more range for CJ to to have a big night, especially if Lou Williams, like if, if those guys don't play and Lou Williams is opposite of him, it could be good. Although, Taya Dosich is also a turnstile, so... Evan Turner expected to be back, 3,700 on FanDuel. Um, he's a four for me because I just don't know how his minutes will be after missing uh, after missing the most recent game. But at 3,700, if he if you know he's going to get like 25 plus, that's pretty big. Um, Nurkic's minutes have been trending downwards. He had 17 in the last one, 20. Um, he's at a you know he had a 22 a couple nights ago. So it's hard to really invest there. So I don't think that I want anything else. I think that'll be it. Ed Davis has been really good lately, but he's up to 5,200. So it's hard to focus on that. All right, so short list is done. I'm anxious to throw this into the optimizer to see how it looks and basically how the, the pistons shake out. And which stud that affects the most. I think it's going to put Braun in a lot of lineups, but we'll see. I don't remember all the pist Pistons possession or positions off the top of my head. So I don't know uh, how that will break out. But I think there's going to be a lot of value. No sign of Braun, so it's AD, which is interesting. Wait, did I skip the Warriors? I did. I skipped the Warriors. I was like, why the fuck is Durant there? Uh, Alright, Warriors, 112.25 implied total is third. I knew that went quickly. I bet you guys were screaming at the computer. Well, you're not even talking about the damn best team in basketball. I got it. I caught it. Clay, 6,300 and 6,200 needs 31. Um, I mean, he's all over the place. He can go 15 to 45 pretty easily. So it's hard to just say no to that. Everybody's just sort of the same here. Um, 
Draymond is 8,000, so he would need 40. Also, just a th I think they're all going to be just threes for me. I would take whatever fit. Durant, 10, 2, and 9, 8. I could see now why he's popping as much as he is at 10 2 at small forward. That I probably like more than LeBron. He needs 50. Yeah, I probably like Durant more than LeBron. The only concern is just playing the Jazz. Yeah, there are threes across the board. So now we can hop back to this and uh, actually look at it. So the, as expected, Reggie Bullock goes 90%, which makes sense to me. We do get to Russ 44% of the time. So it is interesting to me that LeBron is the lower of all of them, and we don't see basically any Harden. So that's we want to capitalize on the value at shooting guard, I think. So if we grab Reggie Bullock... And we check out Fantasy Labs to see if he correlates well with anybody. The hope would be Tolliver. Slightly decent with Tolliver. It's actually been very positive with Luke Kennard. Does Fantasy 5x5 five five agree? So, Bullock... Tolliver a little bit, Kennard not so much. I assume Tolliver is up there. So I would probably only do two Pistons. I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to go crazy there. Drummond is there a little bit, so I'll hold just for a little bit to see if Bullock and well, I, I probably wouldn't take it like that. Does Kennard have anything that's um, super interesting? Or I guess I should look at Tolliver too. <laughs> Tolliver and Stanley Johnson. Okay. Canard and Ish. Okay. So I would probably go Bullock there. And then um, let's think about this. So we get a lot of Rubio and then one of Westbrook and Curry. I think I would go Donovan Mitchell next. Which is going to naturally get me to Tolliver, and that should point me to all of my studs. So I get a ton. I still get a ton of Westbrook, which is wild. So if I did look Westbrook, it would be in my best interest to go Rubio as well. I don't want to go Rubio and Mitchell, I don't think, but. For this argument, I can. By argument, I don't mean argument for real. Something like that. No, I wouldn't want Joe Ingles. Cantor, DeAndre, Towns. I don't want Joe Ingles. Stop giving me Ingles. I'm going to have to do some, set some stuff up to limit my pistons after they calculate, but a lot of Reggie Bullock. I think I'm going to be pretty focused on Donovan Mitchell. I don't and I don't know, maybe Durant. It's not fitting like I thought it would. Let's take a look at DK. The value's out there. I just need to figure out how the pieces go together. So, upload projections. And uh, I was hoping this was going to be a short Tuesday slate, but I was wrong. So, I will be going live tonight, 6 o'clock. Um, I haven't quite figured out where I'm going to be playing yet or what I'm going to be doing, but it's probably going to be FanDuel, but we'll see.
Oh. I always notice when this is going super slow, like, oh, you forgot to put the randomness on. All right, let's see what we get here. I just, I kind of want to play DK tonight because I think it'd be fun to fit all these pieces together. Tons of scowl. Not that I'm surprised by that. So way more canard and basically no um, Reggie Bullock. So is Reggie Bullock salary on like crazy? Yeah, 4,700. That makes sense. Okay, so it would be canard. got to be Donovan Mitchell. Um, naturally sort of gra need to grab AD if he's that high. And then um, center. Like, I really like Scal, but you need more news for it. He's in every one of these lineups, so it doesn't really matter. I think Trey Lyles would be worth a look. So something there. Peyton, Kennard, Lyles, Porzingis, AD, Mitchell, Scalza. Ugh, no. Is that Collins? These are all shit. Pull Trey Lyles. I don't, none of these, the rest of these guys are like super interesting to me. I guess Tolliver, you end up something like that. It would all be hinging upon Scal. So hopefully we get news there. But that's it for me. Uh, you guys know the drill. Like and subscribe. Um, check out my Twitter or Patreon or Reddit. I'm around everywhere. And we will be live before lock starting at 6. So I will see you then.